cause de ti. I know. You thought it was an errand. Well, Arab, but not you can get out of here. Not so fast, lady. Take it easy. Here. Hide this for me. Say, you're okay. Sorry, I haven't got time to get a little better acquainted. Where did you get this? Never mind. But I'll be back. Ibrahim, you may go. Well, what brings you here in the heat of the sun? A thousand apologies. I did not dream these were your quarters. It's all right. I'm glad to see you. Something wrong? Yes. The thief has robbed my people of something valuable. And you thought this thief might be here? I'm sorry. Do you know who he is? No, I do not. But if I find him... Again, I beg your forgiveness for this intrusion. There's nothing to forgive, David. A mistake is my sin. has eluded us. Only temporary, for I will remain here in El Mokar. Oh, Papa. Get out. The light of Allah be on you, Yusuf Freyr. I bring bad tidings. Buzz it blows. Tell me. Quick. Foul unbeliever discovered the secret of the weapon. An unbeliever? No true believer would violate the possessions of our tribe. This thief stole the gun. Even now he is here in El Mokar. Himmel! The British! Oh, this is serious. There's only one thing to do. Attack the town at once and kill every English pig. Sheikh David would not give such a command. Dumkopf! Haven't I given him arms and ammunition? Does he want to live in bondage forever? There is wisdom in your words, Yusuf Strayer. Then do something. You give the orders. The word of Sheikh David Mustafa Ali bin Malik is law unto all the tribes, even unto me. I can do nothing. Your sheik has been a fool ever since he met that Fox girl. Well, I, it is true. But I am different. First in my heart is the crusade against the infidels. Yes. You have the heart of a lion. You should be the ruler of your tribe. Yes. But it is not so written. 
Ibrahim, if it is to be, it is to be. In the name of the merciful, compassionate. Visibly. Hey, hey, where can I find the British Consul? Me want British Consul. Me American, Mike Malone. Me want Consul, Anglesey, Savvy. Me Suleiman, Abdullah Hassan, Mitkale, Ben Stinko, Ben Broke. Also Ben East Side, Ben West Side, Ben all over town. Well, I'll be a three hump camel in America. <laughs> it's good to see one. Sure, from Brooklyn. No. I ain't advertising it, but my name's Park Yakarkas. Park your carcass. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I really meant to join the Foreign Legion to forget. Yeah. But I forgot where the Foreign Legion was, so I wound up here. And now I forgot what I wanted to forget. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, you're park your carcass, all right. Razor blades! Hey, it looks like you'd starved to death selling razor blades around here. It's a good front, ain't it? Front? For what? Did you ever hear of a grazoo? Sure, that's an old Arabian custom. One tribe steals another tribe's horses and stock. That's it. I'm a one-man grazoo. Oh. <laughs> In plain English, you're a horse thief. How dare you? Here, it's a business. Say, I'm in a hurry now, but I'll look you up when I get through. Where's that British consul? Look. It's the building in the center. Okay. See you later. Razor blade! You the consul? No. Well, I thought not. You can't go in there. I say... Are you the counsel? I am. I thought so. Where can I find Philip Graham? Well, have you an appointment? Yes, no. Have you or have you not an appointment? Well, that's a $64 question. Take it or leave it. Who, who, who are you? Well, the byline's Mike Malone, American news correspondent to you, sir. You, uh, you have your papers, I presume? My passport's right here, yes, sir. Your papers are not in order, Mr. Malone. Yeah, I know. Fact is, I shouldn't be here. I started with the car. But the boat was torpedoed, and I forgot to ask the U-boat captain for a visa because it was too busy swimming. <laughs> then I hitched like a ride on a camel, and here I am. Fix up my passport like good fellow, will you, and tell me where I can find Philip Graham? Well, Mr. Graham is not here at present. Oh, that's bad. Maybe I could tell you what I want. Care to? Well, I have no choice. This thing is too hot to keep on ice. I've got the greatest story that ever sizzled over a teletype. But I thought I should report it officially before I sent it to my papers. Proceed. The Germans are trying to start an uprising among the Arabs. They're supplying them with guns and ammunition. I stumbled over a secret cache of theirs not far from here that's big enough to blow the garrison of this town right off the desk. Are you sure, Mr. Malone, that your flair for headlines hasn't uh, run away with your imagination? Say, do you think I'm kidding? This is not only a great story, a great headline, but it's a tip for you. I've got proof. I've got a gun. It's got made in Germany all over it. Now add that up yourself. Oh, where is it? I uh, left it with a beautiful girl. She lives in that caravansary down by the big gate. Maybe you know her. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Well, you should. She's gorgeous. Yeah? Yes, exactly. Uh, yes, yes. I, 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 I understand. Uh, yeah. Well, please do that without fail. Goodbye. Excuse me. I say, uh, there's another of those American newspaper reporters. Uh, I, 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 th I think he's crazy. He says he's met a gorgeous girl and he gave her a gun. Gave her a gun? Yes. And he's got my hat on. He has your hat on? I say, you don't have to repeat everything I tell you. You'd better find Graham and tell him to keep an eye on him. 
He may get us into trouble. I'll be delighted, sir. He nearly bowled me over. You don't say. He certainly did. Did he? Now, Mr. Malone, uh, suppose you take me to this uh, gorgeous girl. Now you're cooking with gas. With what? The quicker I get this story on the cables, the better. What a story. What a headline. Uh, Mr. Malone, in this country, Allah is more important than headlines. Uh-oh. -uh. Come on, Boise. Come on. You see? So Adolf calls up Emperor Hirohito of Japan. And he says, why haven't you captured Australia yet? And Hirohito says, uh, so sorry, Mr. Hitler. Where are you telephoning from? Moscow? <laughs> <laughs> I say, you know, you, 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 you really are an extraordinary chap. Yeah, this is it. Come in. Oh, hi, you beautiful. Say, this is the British Council. He's okay. Show him that little souvenir I left here with you, will you? Aren't you mistaken? Mistaken? How could I ever mistake a face like yours? Miss Brooks, this is Mr. Uh, Mike Mister. Malone, American Press. Go ahead. This is Mike Malone, Mr. Mike Malone of the American Press. He informs me that he gave you a gun, which he evidently purloined from the Maleks. Now, do you know anything at all about it? Of course, she knows all about it. Drag it out, sister. This guy's okay. You can trust him. Mr. Forbes, this man must be mad. What would I be doing with his gun? Hey, did I or did I not leave a gun here with you? You did not. Well, I'll be a cockeyed, whirling dervish. Lady, you pardon my subtle Americanism. But if you were a man, I'd punch you right in your nose. If I were a man, I'd throw you out. Why? No, 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 no don't. Let's get off now. I tell you, it. she's got that gun. Somehow I prefer to take the lady's word. Thanks. Oh, so that's the way it is, is it? Okay, I'll get out of here. Good day, gentlemen. You're quite right. He's dotty. If I weren't a gentleman, I'd have called her a dirty little liar. Oh, I say, please do try and remember you're not at home. <laughs> I'll try to remember never to forget that two-faced Sheba, the greatest story I ever tripped over in my life. And she tries to fizzle it right in my kisser. Marvelous. What's her home address anyway, Berlin? But she won't get away with it. Up to now, I never sent a story I couldn't prove. But I know what I know. Now, where's that cable office? It's just down the street, man. I'm, dear fellow, you have no story. That's right. It... I don't know where Philip Graham is either. But don't worry. I always get what I go after. Oh, Miss Bryant. Uh, I say, uh... May I have my hat? <laughs> so long, Forbesy. Good birthday. Raise the blades. To laces. They sleepy. Color buttons. Safe sleeping. Raise the blades. Two laces? No buttons? Razor blades! I better not buy any razor blades. I'd be too tempted to cut a nice lily white throat. What's the matter? All been double crossed by a gal without a conscience. It's an old Arabian custom. You know, in Brooklyn, we have a word for it. Hey, how the Dodgers make out anyway? They won the pennant, dropped the series to the Yankees. Damn bums. Pardon me. Every town I've ever been in, there's always one place where you can get all the local gossip. Well, uh, you are speaking of El Khalid. What a dumb. Besides, it ain't a fit place for Ferengi foreigners like you. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. A drink? Now you're talking. Wait a minute, us Arabs ain't supposed to drink. And besides, we shouldn't be seen together. I'll see you there later. Well, where is this temple of sin? Down past the Arch of the Camels. But don't forget, it's a tough spot. So what? I guess you ain't happy unless you're in a jam. Peace be to Allah, and may great strength go with thee. And boy, will you need it. See you later. Raise the blades, shoelaces.
trying to sell you something, is there? Take a look at what you got this out. Hey, that's a pretty little number. Where'd you get that? Uh, bring me whiskey and soda, will you? By the beard of the prophet, I shall drink with you. Bring me a long, tall glass of Lee Jaloux. Lee Jaloux? Well, that's one brand I must have missed. What the devil is that? Camel's milk stinks. But I gotta be a good Arab. <laughs> Hey, this place don't look so tough. Take a look at old Evil Eye sitting there. So they call him Evil Eye. Oh, no, my. That's Ibri. She David Strong on there. I don't trust him as far as you can throw a candle. He looks like the thief of Baghdad. Maybe I ought to know him better. Don't be crazy. He's the crown prince of poison.
Yeah, he's looking for me. Well, who the devil are you? Philip Rain. Philip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. I sure took the hard way to find you. You seem to prefer the hard way. <laughs> hey, let's get out. Hey, that suits me. I got a lot of questions I want to ask you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> By the beard of the prophet. No words to that effect. This ought to fit. Try it on. Oh, oh the shirt off your back, eh, Phil? Anything you want. Yeah, well, how about trusting me with a little of your confidence? <laughs> Are we getting back to that again? Why not? Here we are sitting on a volcano and you insist on giving me phony answers. Well, I'm sorry, but I'll have to play this game the way I see it. I always thought the British intelligence was pretty much on the toes. Perhaps there's a possibility of their knowing a lot more than you think you know. The same line I got from Forbes. I tell you, I can't swallow it. We've got to do something. Act. Beat him to the punch. <laughs> Malone, you're really a nice chap. But you've got one great weakness. Impatience. This isn't 42nd Street and Broadway, nor Piccadilly Circus. Things are done differently out here. Not your way, and not necessarily mine. Oh, stop giving me that quaint philosophy. All I want to know is who, what, when, where, and how. I'm sorry, old boy. I can't tell you anything more than I have no. for the present. The old brush off again, eh? Well, at least you're not deliberately lying like that girl did. Oh, don't take it like that. The girl may have had excellent reasons for her actions. Wait until you know more about her. If you ever do. I'm going to know more about it, all right. I'm going to make it my business to get to the bottom of this thing. With or without your help, I'm going to run down this story. But I must tell you this. If you insist on going about this the way you have... You'll throw a monkey wrench in my machinery, is that it? <laughs> okay. Guess we understand each other. Fair enough. Let's get a bite to eat. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm starved to death. I know a place down the street here. Yeah. Really? Well, just about out of the... Oh, Mr. Graham, how do you do? How do you do? Stranger, I see. Oh, excuse me, this is Mr. Malone, an American newspaper reporter. This is Mr. Strayer, exporter and uh, importer. How do you do, Mr. Strayer? I'm so glad to know you're an American. Thank you. And you? I'm a Czech, Mr. Malone, a Czech. Really, I wouldn't have believed it. I haven't seen you for several days. No, I've been away. Oh, uh, in uh, Cairo, perhaps? Not in Cairo. Your business must be pretty bad these days, Mr. Strayer. Not many places to export to or import from. That's true. But I manage to make a living. Yes, I suppose you're forced to do business with the Arabs. What is one to do? This is a war. Yes. The war puts us all to strange work. Well, I must be going. Good day, gentlemen. See you later, Mr. Strayer. You know, Mike, I had an idea he was trying to pump us. Don't be silly. I was trying to pump him. <laughs> Say, what's the chance of getting a nice New York cut steak about that thing? Certainly. Only it might taste a little like mutton. <laughs> There's that girl I was telling you about. Yes, I've known her for quite some time. Say, I want to meet her officially. I rather think you'd better forget about meeting her officially. If you forget it, I'll take care of it in a good old American fashion. Say, Mike, stop. Not that way. I'll introduce you. Now you're talking United States. Nancy. Uh, Miss Brooks, may I present Mr. Malone? I think I've already had that pleasure. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, but we've never met before. Never. <laughs> Must have been a couple of other people. Well, uh, I thought... Oh, think nothing of it. Anybody can make a mistake. <laughs> but I'm sure glad to meet you anyway. Thank you. Uh, do you mind if uh, I join you? Uh, oh, thanks. Looking at you across the table would be simply fine. We'd have so much to talk about. Uh, did you say you had something to attend to? Well, uh, I... Oh, I'm so sorry, old man. You can't stay, can you? See, well, now please. that's fine. See you later, old fella. Toodaloo. <laughs> Goodbye. Malone, I must explain that I do have other plans. Well, now file that under unfinished business. I'm hungry. Oh, you still here? Say, uh, won't you join them? Glad to, old boy, but join whom? 
Greetings, David. Alaikum. Salam. Um, yeah. Say, Miss... Who's the Arabian Knight? She... David Mustafa Ali bin Nam. Oh, so that's her answer to making a chump out of me. Hiya, battler. Hey. Looks like he means business. Ibrahim! Get out! Salam alaikum. Same to you. I guess your friend doesn't like me very well. His temper is faster than a racing camel. And of course you know Mr. Graham. Salam alaikum. Your tribes are gathering, David? Yes, they are coming in with their flocks. It's our yearly custom. Say, how about all of you having lunch with me on him? What? Oh, oh, of course. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I promised David to ride out to some castles with him. Well, I guess that lets me out. We must start soon, Miss Brooks, before the sun gets too high. All right. Good day, gentlemen. Peace be with you. Peace go with you. Well, that's that. She in love with him? What difference could that make to you? How can you stand there so smugly and see her right off in the desert with a fancy pants Romeo like that? I assure you there's no cause for alarm. The Arabian Code of Honor is beyond reproach. Don't worry. Why should I worry? If she wants to muscle in on a harem, it's all right with me. Boy, but she sure is precious. Ah, what the devil, a woman's a woman and a story's a story. Mate, where are you going? I'm going to cloak myself in the mystery of the East. Figure that out. Teeming with vitamins, that fellow. Even now he rides with that girl in the desert. She is making a fool out of him. And your people suffer. In truth, she has bewitched him. Before she came here, our interests were the same, to break the hold of the British. The tribes finger their weapons impatiently. Do as I tell you, Ibrahim. The time has come for you to talk to your people with strong words. There are many who will listen. You are right, Ibrahim. Have I ever spoken false wisdom to you, my people? No! Then listen to my words. I say to you, arise, O oh my brothers, for you were not born slaves. Then why do you live under the shadow of the oppressor? we be always ground to death under the sands of our native land? No! 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 Then I, Ibrahim, with the courage of a lion, will lead you to freedom. Hey! 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 For it is written that we are all free men. friends who will help us! Like we're in for it, Mr. Forbes. Ibrahim's trying to rouse the Arabs to open revolt. Mm -hmm. I've been expecting it ever since that infernal Malone arrived. He certainly has stirred up a harness nest. Yes, and I'm afraid he's into more mischief right now. Graham, we'll have to take drastic measures with that fellow. I know.
Oh, boy, this is great. I could even fool my creditor. What big eyes you got, Grandma. Parky. <laughs> Pardon the eavesdripping, but what are you made up for? Never mind, but I'm glad you got here. Can you wangle me a horse? Well, wangle isn't the word, but leave it to me. Great stuff. Give me about 20 minutes to uh, kind of make the deal. I'll meet you down at the South Arch. Oh, fine, my precious little grazoon. I'll get going. <laughs> Remember, I'm not guaranteeing what color that horse will be. What's the big idea? What is this, Graham's Monkey Ranch? You can't do this to me. Would like to talk. Genuine thing. They come from one of the best five and ten cent stores in America. They cost me fifteen cents. Fifteen cents? Verily. The price of twenty camels. Twenty camels? Give me now. By the beard of the prophet, they are yours. But first, you must do something for me. Wait a minute, you've got the wrong idea. Tell me what I do. You know where the jail is? Yes. Here is what you do. Thank you. 
told you to do this. He might have sold the razor blades. Oh, Parky. Thanks a lot. It's swell of you. You're all right. So you're a sweet kid. You better get out of here. I don't want you in this. Good old Parky. How did you engineer it? I may not be handsome, but I got swell technique with those Arabian mamas. Come on, I got a couple of nags waiting outside the gate. I only need one. I'm going alone. Wherever thou goest, I goest. Down they go us to that little funeral. Suits me. At least I'd make a happier corpse if I knew I was dead. All right, I'll tell you. I'm going to swipe another gun and throw it in a lady's face. Only this time in front of witnesses. Okay, pal. But next time, try a string of beads. It'll get you just as far. Come on, you Brooklyn Grazoo. Would you not mind not marching up and down like that? You make me nervous. But I feel I should go down and get Malone out of jail. Oh, what a horrible thought. Let him cool his heels. After all, he did bring us what he thought was valuable information. Oh, nonsense. That gang's a meddler. Oh, what, what, what's he doing with that silly beard on? That doesn't follow. That doesn't fool anybody. You know, he's he's more of a menace than the fifth column and an Arab revolver all rolled into one. You can't blame him for all our troubles. He's merely doing his job the way he sees it. That's exactly why we can't afford to release him. The man's positively dangerous. I feel relieved to know that he's safely under lock and key. The American reporter, he has escaped. What? That lunatic? Oh, my goodness, now we're in fight. Uh, the guards couldn't help it. I knew it. I should have had him chained hand and foot. It is only natural after traveling so extensively in Europe I should become a great admirer of their beautiful, exquisite women. You sure didn't get lost in Ireland? You sound as though you had a master's degree in Blarney. <laughs> I'm really sincere. Yes, sweet day. A minute ago you said you liked nearly all things English. What is it you don't like about them? I do like them. But I'm too content to discuss politics, which are not for women in any case. I would prefer to remain in a more uh, personal plane, shall I say? Well, you probably shouldn't say it, but I'll listen anyway. So you see, Nancy, the sheik places his wife on a very high pedestal. I'm sure in your case that would be true. I am with my people. You're a very fine person, David, but I'm of my people. Are we not both true believers? Is not your prophet as well as my prophet just and righteous? Do we not both learn piety and humbleness out of good books? Your Bible, my Koran? Nancy, though differently expressed, our philosophies of life are fundamentally identical. Well, there's a lot of truth in what you say, but 
Our mode of life becomes so different in the very expression you speak of. To every Arab, high, born, or low, his first consideration is his horse. Isn't that right? Naturally. <laughs> Not his wife. Nancy, you're <laughs> almost as provoking as you are beautiful. I'm horrible. You're lovely. This is a party. It don't look good to me. Lots of them. Made in Germany for a revolt in Libya. Come on, say, I got a date to start a tempest in a teapot. Looks like plenty of trouble. What's that? Somebody coming. Let's duck. They're in here. I saw them come in. Punishment will be swift and just. Bring him out. Your tribes are gathering, isn't that right? Yes. Does that mean there's any chance that the peace might be broken with the English? Is it that you only bear me company to discuss these political issues? Of course not, but their welfare happens to mean a lot to me. Nancy, one thing I'll promise you. So long as I live, my people will remain at peace with the English. That is my will. I'm very glad to hear. It was bestowed upon my grandfather, Said Mahar bin Faisal bin Melek, Sheikh of Sheikh by the grace of the good Queen Victoria. It is one of my family's proudest possessions. Oh, it's beautiful, David. An inheritance of peace and friendship. With the deepest reverence, I shall always cherish this moment. Now then, shall we again speak of uh, horses and women? Oh, David, after all my talking, and you still insist on putting horses before women, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> of the spears. Who dares order the punishment of the spears? Ibram, master. He has caught the one who stole the weapon. 
So be it. He well deserves his painful death. David, you can't kill the American. The American? So, inadvertently, you have told me much I didn't know. Oh, David, listen to me. Don't be a fool, David. If he still lives, have the thief brought to me. David, listen. <laughs> Is the American. Mike, I didn't believe me. I didn't. Oh, go away. I'm not interested in your soft soap. She don't mean a thing to me. Believe it or not, Chief, I was walking a mile for a camel. You must realize, Mr. Malone, your situation is deadly serious. Yeah, well, you're the one that's on the spot. Don't you know you can't do business with Hitler? I only do business for the welfare of my people. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's why I'm here. Make a great headline. It will never be printed. David, you can... Silence. It must be clear to you, my sheik, that while she enchants you, he robs you. These to conspire against you. Your words have weight, Ibrahim. But my problem is heavy. Problem? By the beard of the prophet, there is no problem. These two should pay with their lives. Perhaps. I will reflect until morning. Take him away. I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, but it is necessary that you remain here as my guest. You'll be made comfortable in the women's quarters. Why don't you try and rest, laddie? You're tired out. Well, I'd feel a great deal better if I knew where Nancy spent the night and mm. where to put my fingers on below. Frankly, I don't like it. No. We'll be very fortunate if we never see Malone again. Pardon me, but I was told to inform you that one of Sheep David's men came for you, Sos Stryer. Both left his office apparently in a great hurry. You know, this might be the answer. What's up? I'm not quite sure. Believe me, I am your friend. I've given you guns and ammunition. But you do not listen. You do not follow my advice. It's this girl, this Nancy Brox. She isn't what she seems. What do you mean? She is your enemy. Only yesterday I learned that she's working for the British Intelligence Service. <sighs> this vile female. Her life and the life of the American must pay for this deceit. It is the immutable law of our tribe.
Parky. Mike, you're in a tough spot. You've got to get out of here. Ibrahim signed your death warrant, you and the girl. Where is she? I busted her out of the women's quarter. She's waiting down back at the spring. I also wangled the horse. Nice going. Come on. No, no. I got to stay here. I got another little job to do. And here, you take this with you. You may need it. Okay, fine. Go, Go ahead now. Scram. All right. I have listened carefully to your words, Yusuf Strayer. But I cannot console myself to break the treaty with the British. Ha! Ah, what's the treaty? A mere scrap of paper. Now, with our Fuhrer, it's different. He has a reputation for dealing fairly with minorities. Prisoners have escaped. After them. This is the hour to strike. Our warriors are girded for battle. We will attack the garrison at El Moka. Ibrahim! Peace will not be broken. I am the Sheik. Fool. You are not the Sheik of all your people. It is so written. Go. Spread the word. The British killed your Sheik. Lead your people to freedom. Go! Plenty. Sheik David caught me swiping another gun, and now all hell's broke loose. Oh, of all the blundering, blithering boobies I have, I've known you are the king. Well, cool down. Maybe I did you a favor by smoking this thing out in the open. Oh, don't be so silly. We knew all about your machine gun. We know every move the Nazis make. You understand? Well, what are you waiting for? Well, we have a treaty with the Arabs. Oh, Forbes, you can't play ostrich with little Adolf. No, sir. He'll kick you right in the tail feather. Mr. Malone, haven't you done enough already? You've got your headline, or you'll have it soon. I can just see it, El Mukhtar, ravaged by Arabs. The pity of it is that none of us will be alive to read it. You see? She's right. Now, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Our scouts are coming in. The Arabs are riding to attack us. We'll do all we can, but I'm afraid we're greatly outnumbered. Well, we'd better get the women and the children into the fort, hadn't we? Yes, sir. Is there anything I can do? Yes. You can get the very devil out of Libya. Oh, I must be losing my grip. It took a field marshal to kick me out of Greece. I'll see you to the fort. I'd rather you wouldn't. Okay, sister. Have Captain Whiteley move his men up to the east wall. Why do you 
people. Peace. Look. As long as he lives, you cannot be she. But he does live. My children, peace. No one is entitled to two lives. Verily, you speak the truth. this man Strayer for a long time. He was one of Himmler's most dangerous agents. You mean you're not an Arab? Well, maybe in Brooklyn they'd call me an Arab. But actually, I'm military intelligence. It may sound corny to you, but it's true. No wonder those razor blades weren't any good. Great sheik. I'm a very lucky man to have friends as you. There's only one thing I don't understand. How come when Strayer shot at you, such close range, he didn't kill you? This saved my life. A good omen. It will always remain a symbol of lasting peace between your people and mine. Well spoken, Sir David. Philip, Philip, you're all right. Oh, darling. Oh, darling. I never felt better. Oh, it's so worried. Hey, Phil, all I can say is you're a pretty lucky fellow to have a girl like Nancy in love with you. Why shouldn't I be in love with him? He's my brother. Yeah. He's your brother? Her name is Nancy Brooks Graham. Say, we've been wasting a lot of time. May the sun shine on you always. Wait a minute, Sheik. It's hot enough in here already. Go on, pedal your razor blades, Grazu. Are you kidding? Razor blades. You lay there. 